Now, before we install Gemini CLI, we need to make sure that we have our Node.js installed on our local machine. Now, if you haven't done so, please make sure to navigate to Node.js and download this based on your operating system. All right, so once we have Node.js installed, and then we're just gonna execute the following command here. So here, I'm just gonna open my terminal, and then here, I'm just gonna paste the command. And then here is going to ask to install the following package, and then we're just gonna say yes to proceed. If it's your first time installing, it might pop up with the access files in the document folders. We're just gonna say allow. Okay, so once it's installed, and here it basically asks us to select a theme. So here we have default dark, there's also GitHub darks, or default light, GitHub light, Google code, and we're just gonna stick with the default here for default dark. And then here for the authentications, we're just gonna select login with Google. And then here we're just gonna click on sign in with Google here. And once we sign in, it looks something like this, which means that we have successfully authenticated for the Gemini CLI. Now, if you ever get an error for fail to log in because the account requires setting the Google Cloud project environment variable, then we're gonna to navigate to this link and it will basically tell you exactly what you need to do, basically setting the environment variable for Google Cloud projects. And it must equal to the project ID based on your Google Cloud. And you can find the project ID if you navigate to Google Cloud. If you create a project, you should have the project ID shown here, which you can copy and set it inside of your terminal. All right, so once we set the environment variable, we're gonna run the same command again. This is what it looks like. So now you can see that we can be able to get started with the Gemini CLI. And if you were to look at the bottoms here, we can see that it is using the Gemini 2.5 Pro for the 100% context. Now we can be able to use the slash health to be able to see what are the commands that we can run for the Gemini CLI. So if we were to run this, you can see that we have the MCP, the memories, and there's also tools where we can list out all the available tools for the Gemini CLI. And then there's also a shell command, which we can be able to run, start with the exclamation mark. So here I'm just gonna use the shell command by using a exclamation mark. And I can be able to do, for example, TWD to show the current directory path. So if I were to run this, you can see that this is the current path that we have. And now there's also the keyboard shortcuts that we can use, for example, shift enter for new line, up and down for cycle through the prompts histories, and then escape for the cancel operations, uh, control C for quitting the application. So if we ever want to quit, we can just do control C and it will basically just quit the current Gemini CLI application. Now for the remaining of this demonstration, we're just going to use a code editor, something like Visual Studio Code for this demonstration. So here I'm just going to open my Visual Studio Code. Now here you can see I have opened a folder called Gemini Demo, which is a empty folder inside of the Visual Studio Code. And here to get started, we're just going to run the same command inside of the Visual Studio Code terminal. So we're just going to copy this and paste it here. All right, so after we run the command, you can see that we have entered Gemini CLI, which currently is using the Gemini 2.5 Pro. So for demonstration, we're just gonna let Gemini to clone a GitHub repository and be able to read and understand and make some modifications based on a open source GitHub repository. Now for demonstration, we're just gonna use this repository, which is a repository called Smo Agent, agent that thinks in code. So we're just gonna clone this repository, let Gemini to read this code, be able to understand this code and make some future modifications if needed, okay? so we're just going to clone this repository. We're just going to click on this clone repository link. And here we're just going to open a new terminal. We're just going to do git clone inside of our folder. So you can see we have small agents folder here open. And if I were to come back to the Gemini terminal, we're just going to do at, and you can see that it shows the small agents. So we can just do tab and it will basically fill this out. So it's going to be at small agents. Now here you can see this is going to be the path for where we want the Gemini to look at. And below here, these are all the files inside of this directory, right? So we have the license, we have the make file, all that kind of things. And we can be able to target specifically by specify the path here, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to let the Gemini to read the entire repository instead. So here I'm just going to add a space and then follow this and we're going to add the prompt. So basically the goal is to analyze the overall architecture of this project, including the main modules, the responsibilities, the data flow dependencies, and use of design patterns and potential architecture issues. So I'm just gonna run this and let's see what it does. All right, so it's completed successfully and you can see we have 61% context left, which has been used up for 39% of the context. And if it were to scroll all the way up, uh, you can see that it analyzed all the files here. And here is basically the response, right? So we have the main modules and the responsibility. So you can see this is a, what this project is about, which is a Python library for building and running AI agents. And here you can see it gives detailed explanation for each file. So if we have, we have the agents.py, right? And it tells you exactly what this file does. So here we have three core components, right? So the multi-step agents, the code agents, the tool calling agents. And there's also models and there's also the implementations. And then here's also we have the tools, 
um, the memories, which store the history of an agent's run. And there's also data flow and dependencies. And if you were to scroll down, there's also dependencies for using the Hugging Face Hub. And there's also different dependencies we can see here. And in terms of the design patterns, we're using the following dependency design patterns. There's also potential architecture issues, which laid out for the securities, the prompt logic, coupling, state management, so on. Okay, so there's a lot of things mentioned here. Awesome, so now you can see that we can be able to use the Gemini CLI inside of our Visual Studio code for understanding what's happening inside of our GitHub repository. But now let's take a look at how we can be able to use our MCP tools inside of our Gemini CLI. So to do so, we're gonna use a Context7 MCP server for demonstration for this video. And one good thing about this MCP server is that it's able to fetch the up-to-date code documentation for any repository. So we're gonna use the Context7 here to pull data from repositories code examples, documentations, straight from the source, and be able to place them directly into our prompts. And that's the goal, what we're gonna do inside of our Gemini CLI. Now, before we add a MCP server, we also can be able to check what we have inside of our MCP server list. So we can do this by using a slash MCP uh, command inside of our Gemini CLI. And if we were to run this, we should be able to see that there's no MCP servers configured. So now it's a good time for us to configure this inside of our MCP server settings. And to do so, we need to find the connection settings inside of the repository. So if we were to come back to the repository, search for local server connection, and this is gonna be the settings we're gonna change inside of the Gemini settings.json file. So to modify our Gemini settings.json, we're just gonna come back to the terminal, clear the sessions here, and we're gonna CD into the Gemini folder. Then we're gonna do the nano to basically uh, modify the settings.json file. Now this is gonna be the JSON file or the settings.json file that we have currently inside of our Gemini CLI. So we're gonna add a MCB server into this object. So then we're just gonna to navigate to the doc and copy this code. Then I'm gonna to navigate to the bottom and append it at this object right here. But just to make this demonstration much more fun, I also add another uh, MCB server called Task Master AI. And feel free to add whichever MCB server uh, you like or you need for this Gemini CLI um, use case. But here, we're just gonna add another MCP server here, and I'm gonna demonstrate how we can be able to use multiple MCP servers inside of our Gemini CLI here. To give you a heads up, basically this MCP server is an AI-powered task management system, which is good for uh, our editor or co-editor like Cursor, Lovable, or even Visual Studio Code, okay? So we're gonna use this inside of our Visual Studio Code to create our software, to create our program uh, using this MCP servers here. But before we do though, uh, we wanna make sure to set our environment variables for the uh, Gemini code. So here I'm just gonna using the Gemini API uh, for this environment variable for the large language model here. So once we set the environment variables, we will save the JSON file. And to save this, we will just do control O, enter, control X, and this will save the settings.json inside of our terminal. But once we've done this, uh, what we can do then is we can be able to navigate to our uh, Gemini CLI and be able to use our MCB servers inside of our repository here. So here you can see I have restart the Gemini CLI session. And once it's restarted, and we should be able to see that there's two MCB servers inside of our Gemini CLI. So now if I were to do slash MCP, and it should be able to show the servers, MCP servers that we have inside of our system. Awesome, so here we're just gonna use the contact seven MCP to search for all the gen latest features, and let's see what it respond. So here you can see it's currently defining the response uh, structure, and here you can see it's basically examining the request, define the user extent, and ask a clarification question, would you like to proceed with resolving the library ID for Autogen? So here I'm gonna give it a yes for this, and let's see what it does. And then here it's asking for permission for the resolve library ID, so I'm gonna say yes to that. And currently it's beginning with the Autogen inquiry, so it's gonna look through the Autogen documentations, extracting the library documentations here. Okay, awesome, so now we have the response fully generated. So if we were to scroll all the way up, uh, we should be able to see that here. It basically says that Autogen introduced several new features across its .NET and Python versions. So these are the highlights for .NETs, and these are the highlights for Python versions.